All right, uh, we are in the home stretch. We are, uh, we are starting the last uh, phase, the everyday delivery phase. And, um, you know, in a lot of ways, this is simply going to build upon the earlier phases. Um, we, we've gone live, and now this is the incremental, you know, ongoing everyday improvements to the application. Um, so before we actually sort of dive into this, or instead of diving into this, we thought maybe we'd get feedback from the audience, uh, also just to sort of get a little bit more engagement. Um, once you've gone live with your app, what are some of the key activities that you see as being critical um, to to really ensuring the you know the success of your app, the ongoing sort of health of the app? I'd, I'd love to just maybe get a few comments from the group. Yeah, so critical. I mean, they they say you. You know, only get a first chance, one chance to make a first impression. <laughs> if you release your app and you know performance is poor, it doesn't matter. You know how many features you've delivered, they're going to have a negative impression, right? I mean, just look at all the you know one star apps in the app store. You know, a lot of them are because of things unrelated to the features and functionality. It's just due to crashes or performance. Um, other other sort of post go live uh, considerations. Yeah, and, and that is one of the challenges because the velocity of development is increasing. And so the, we sort of touched on this in the last session, the velocity of training and enablement and, and documentation needs to increase as well. Um, and so I would encourage this. Um, it sounds counterintuitive, but maybe you don't need as much documentation, right? And it goes to if you've been releasing sort of smaller features, more incremental features, you may not need as much. Now, that's not to say you can get away without any, but <coughs> uh, the point is the smaller updates in, in uh, the right UX or UI inside the application can go a long ways. You may not have to do the same kinds of docs or rollout as you've done before. Um, and again, um, on the application audit stage, you may um, provide some checks and uh, understand where is uh, that really necessary documentation gap and fill it only for those steps of, of the um, process of your uh, application lifecycle that uh, really need that. So like uh, you may avoid uh, updating documentation just as soon as your features are uh, going out. And later you can review what do you need to uh, update based on user feedback, user questions, criticality of your uh, processes and applications and so on. This is where getting uh, uh, and having the right infrastructure in place to get really good system telemetry and metrics is important, right? Because you can see what parts of the applications are getting more heavily used, right? And that can be one of the signals to also uh, inform where you need to add more, you know, richness or depth in terms of the documentation. Um, so, so it, it can also be incremental and iterative, um, uh, and, and you know, use use the data and the feedback you're collecting during stage nine in part to help guide you. Um, you know, uh, try to also really focus on um, getting feedback from a, an array of stakeholders. Um, you know, one of the things that often happens is you you get. Uh, one or two that are really noisy, but they may not reflect the range of sort of experience levels. And you want to have feedback from not just the power users who are looking for the, you know, the nth degree of feature richness, but from the newer users as well, right? And so it's important to get sort of a good sampling of users uh, when, you, when you you prioritize docs and enablement. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. A lot of times you get feedback from users who may not be using the system very much. So you, you do want to have, uh, you know, have a check to make sure that the users are are really using it and, and so frequency of use can help. Um, so again, the feedback is an iterative cycle, sort of coincident, both stages nine and 10 also sort of are running in parallel. You're getting continuous feedback, you're constantly and continuously adding improvements. Um, you know, it, it going to sort of the next slide for a second. Um, feedback prioritization is super important, right? Because again, you want to get things out as quickly as possible. Some feedback, you know, you you, you may want to to really use the stakeholder to, to help prioritize the things that are most urgent. Um, it's not just whoever's yelling the loudest or whoever gives you the first feedback. You have to have still a disciplined framework for prioritization. Um, the other thing I, I would just sort of close off this stage with is the pace of feedback is also important. A lot of times people are really good at, you know, high pace of 
delivery uh, of the of the MVP, and then they sort of collapse. And I was like, oh, phew, we, we released the software. The, it's important to maintain the same tempo so that the feedback you're getting, um, you know, you're able to also give everyday, you know, responses to that feedback. And I think if the end users see that you're being very responsive and you're continuing that pace that they were used to during the sort of development stage, that also helps them uh, so reduce the tension because they will see that their feedback makes it in and so they won't be fighting as hard to get their f item first because they'll know if it's you know today or tomorrow or next week they're, s they're getting a pretty rapid velocity in terms of their feedback. One of the, the things I'll say is you know as you're doing a lot of these incremental improvements um, understand that some of these may uh, you know be so quickly addressed others may want to go back and uh, and revisit design or even the options analysis. So don't be afraid to sort of repeat the process that we talked about. Um, you know, there are cases where the, the process has changed or the requirements have changed sufficiently that you do want to reapply uh, sort of the methods that we, we, we talked about uh, in the MVP stage uh, to make sure that you're, you're really addressing it in the right way. Okay. Yeah, the key here is is really the decomposition, right? Because uh, what often happens is you have uh, too big of a feature that you're trying to deliver, and parts of it may be ready, parts of it may not be, right? And so you have to wait for sort of the, the long poll to be completed. That is oftentimes a sign that you haven't decomposed the features small enough and bite-sized enough. Um, so the more you can do that, then it reduces the interdependencies, obviously, between different components of what you're releasing and helps you get into that everyday mentality. Um, and, and so uh, there's an art to it, certainly, to help. Yeah, an important thing here is that um, important is uh, not only decomposition in terms of priorities, like uh, we do one step by uh, the other, but also decomposition between applications and be between some pieces of functionality that can be delivered independently. Uh, different platforms provide different uh, uh, tools for that. For example, in Croatia, we have uh, packages uh, that allows you to uh, create that uh, composable applications and allow you to um, deploy your applications in small pieces. For example, you are uh, sometimes able to deploy the part of the application and not the whole one if you've uh, decomposed that uh, properly. And for uh, complex applications, uh, that is extremely important to uh, do that uh, job with your uh, no-code uh, application architect. Yeah, especially the more complex your application gets, the, the more valuable it becomes to have properly thought through how to decompose your application because each step then becomes easier to incrementally test, individually easier to release. Um, and, and actually it also helps with change management as well. Um, it's easier to, you know, to uh, uh, roll out changes to your end users if you can do it you know, smaller steps at a time rather than waiting for a really complex bundle of features all to be released in one sort of big, big mass. Um, yeah, this, this sort of goes through some of the guidelines on like how to think about from a change management perspective, um, maybe staging, you know, some of the, the invisible changes or really simple changes out that don't require training. Um, for ones that do require more changes and the ones perhaps where you've had to go back and rethink the design or you've made a more uh, broad impact to the workflow inside your application, um, you may want to um, to, to slow down those changes, not because you have to. I mean, you could release them rapidly, but some of these you may, you may want to time with, you know, either education or training on the process. And it's still, you know, there's some there's some uh, you know practices there that I think are important to to make sure that you haven't forgotten in terms of user enablement or training rollout. Yeah, and important thing about uh, no-code platform or basically using any unified platform for uh, creating applications is that for a huge amount of your changes, uh, the usage patterns are familiar to your uh, end users. So that makes the whole process more um, light and uh, intuitive for uh, the users. I think you saw that in the last session, right? The benefit of adopting a standard UI framework, the Freedom UI, just allows you to you know pick up new applications more readily um, because of that. Application audit, this is a super important phase. Um, it repeats you know, uh, a number of the things we've talked about uh, from prior sessions around 
you know, reviewing for end of life, reviewing for obsolescence. These things happen both at a feature level and at an application level. So don't be afraid. And in, in, it's important to have a feedback loop that that you know does look for those and, and helps you uh, go back and, and clean out, get fit right uh, from an application health perspective. Um, a lot of times those have nothing to do with the application itself. The business may have changed or the process may have changed around the application. And so again, there's features that used to be super important but no longer are. So you have to trim the features and go back and, and sort of adopt that, uh, that sort of, uh, you know, process of continuous review of your application. The COE can play a, a very key role here. Um, <clears throat> This talks to some of the change events that may trigger an application audit. Um, this is where, again, uh, the application matrix will help guide sort of, you know, how often to, to consider doing an audit. Um, it, it, but, but it's important to do it at, at some level, whether it's your individual team or whether the COE is doing it, is to keep, you know, that discipline in place. And really talk about, I think, you know, the COE, I think, really is an indication that your composability uh, sort of strategy is, is maturing, right? Because you've moved beyond just a, a project or two. By the time you set up a COE, it's a, it's a signal that your, your multiple groups, multiple processes are using no code. And I think that also highlights that there may be, <coughs> may be opportunities to reuse components, reuse solutions. Um, it, it, you know, it's in part, you know, uh, sort of expert uh, expertise, but, you know, do also go back to uh, gathering data, gathering metrics, right? Avoid what I call the field of dreams approach. If you build it, they will reuse it. That won't necessarily happen. You want to track which components are being reused, um, and that may drive you either to uh, increase sort of your internal marketing or communication around certain components that aren't being used, that you know maybe people aren't reusing them because so there's a lack of awareness, or is it not being reused because no one needs it? <laughs> uh, but, but use data to make those decisions, I think, especially as you build up a, and curate a larger collection of components, the data and analytics around that become super important. So uh, that concludes the last stage in the process. I don't know if we have 